Hey everyone, Dr. Jack Audie here, and today I'm going to be taking you through what happens after we've got an activated TH17 cell. So we've got an activated TH17 cell, it's on the loose. What are those downstream effects that are going to help us fight an infection? So let's jump straight into it. Now, we've got our T cell receptor activation, right? Uh, we've got the antigen recognition going on, and we've got the release of interleukin-1 beta, um, which are, is it one of the many classical signaling cascades that can lead to TH17. There's a lot more. Um, and then that TH17, uh, T helper cell, will release IL-17. This is the famous cytokine that gave the TH17 its name, right? Um, TH17 releases IL-17. It's quite nice, that one. A little bit confusing because the TH1 cell releases IL-2. But anyway, they, biologists are never consistent about how they name things. Anyway, so a TH17 cell releases IL-17. It releases a couple of other cytokines, um, IL-22 being a famous one. Um, but we're going to focus on IL-17 here because there are a million cytokines and we can't learn them all, right? So T cell receptor activation, IL-1 receptor activation, we end up with a T, T helper cell 17 or a TH17, and it's going to release IL-17. Now IL-17 actually acts on quite a few cells. Um, epithelial cells are a classic kind. So here we've got a lung epithelial cell, for example, and macrophages are another example. There are a few other cells as well, but those are two really famous ones that respond to T uh, IL-17 through the IL-17 receptor, right? So IL-17 works on the IL-17 receptor of these two uh, cell types here, for example, and it will um, make them produce um, antimicrobial compounds, right? Um, so interferon is famous for inducing um, antiviral compounds in a lot of cell types. IL-17 induces predominantly antibacterial and antifungal compounds um, in a huge range of cell types as well. Um, and one example is defensins. Now, defensins are a group of very, actually pretty small proteins that polymerize in the membrane of bacteria and create a pore which lyses them. Now, as we're going through the immune system, you start to realize pore formation, proteins that create holes in the membrane, are critical for so many things, right? Netosis in neutrophils is induced by gas dermins creating pores. T, cytotoxic T cells and natural killer cells kill virally infected host cells using perforin, which creates a pore. And then there's the um, uh, complement membrane attack proteins, um, which are complement proteins that basically form a pore in bacteria and lyse them. So we can see that there's a lot of lysis going on um, as a way of killing cells. It's just such a clean way to kill a cell. You poke a hole in its membrane and you ruin all the like ionic balances that they've got cause osmotic swelling and they end up popping. So defensins are a classic example. So IL-17 causes a whole bunch of genes to flip on on the macrophage and epithelial cells to produce antifungal and antibacterial proteins such as defensins. It also gets them to produce IL-8 and chemokines. So remember how I said um, IL-17 is a, is a major neutrophil cytokine. It induces a massive neutrophil response, but it doesn't do it directly. You see, it does it indirectly. It creates the parenchymal macrophages, the macrophages sitting in the tissue um, that are affected by the infection, and epithelial cells pump out IL-8 and chemokines. And chemokines are just cytokines um, that attract immune cells. So uh, chemokines that will attract neutrophils into the tissue, and IL-8 is that famous neutrophil activation cytokine. So we've seen this before in a previous video. IL-8 binds to the IL-8 receptor on neutrophils, which causes calcium flux. Calcium rushes in to the cell, and that causes degranulation of neutrophil elastase, and in inside those granules, <coughs> excuse me, I'm back. Okay. Um, and in, am I back? Hello? Hello? Oh, I am back. Okay. So I was looking at the wrong microphone. Bit of a rough one today. Okay. So inside the granules are neutrophil elastase um, down here and myeloperoxidase, for example, which is an enzyme that creates bleach, hypochlorous acid. Um, so, um, hypochlorite. Um, so, 
yes, and those two are absolute pathogen killing things. Neutrophil elastase chops up everything, so it chops up fungal and bacterial proteins. Bleach sterilizes everything, that's why we use it on our bathtub, and that's why neutrophils use it, right? So that's the point of the IL-17 response here. To pump in massive amounts of neutrophils, because remember, we've got those that double signal going on in the macrophage, so we're freaking out because we've got too much pathogen to deal with, right? So we need to just fill that zone with bleach and neutrophil elastase. Uh, but there's also um, something else interesting that, that goes on. IL-17 um, induces macrophages to produce IL-12, right? And IL-12 we've already met from the Th1 response, okay? So now you can see that the immune system is starting to plan ahead, okay? So we're overloaded with pathogens. We're going to need um, our adaptive immune response. We're going to need T cell proliferation and downstream we'll get B cell proliferation and antibody production. So we need that T cell activation and proliferation pathway to occur um, to initiate that adaptive immune response to end up with um, a, a specific and targeted and a really effective immune response happening seven, seven days later, right? So we need that to happen. So the IL-17 says, let's do neutrophils now. So we'll load up with neutrophils now, kill as many bacteria as we can. And in the background, the macrophages are pumping out IL-12 to produce Th1 cells, which are going to cause T cell proliferation, which may also result in Th2 cells, which is then going to cause B cell proliferation and antibody production. And we're going to get cytotoxic T cell production. And so we're really just going to move straight into an adaptive immune response after this neutrophil response. So it's a great way to stack it. It's kind of really clever. So IL-17 initiates an immediate innate immune response with neutrophils and initiates a downstream adaptive immune cell response through Th1, eventually Th2 and B cells. Right, so that's why dose, right? You can see it's perfectly designed for this dose response. We've got too much um, bacteria going on. Um, or, or fungi going on. And so that's causing that massive danger signal, the IL-1 signal, which is causing the Th17 cells, which is causing the neutrophils. Um, IL-1 will actually cause neutrophils directly as well. So it's part of the adaptive and innate immune system working together. Um, yeah, so then we get the neutrophils. Neutrophils help deal with the problem immediately. So then we can later on initiate a um, adaptive immune response later. Brilliant. Okay, so that was the TH17 cell. In the next video, we're going to meet another T cell, the T reg cell. And this is going to be the last T cell I cover. There are actually more, <laughs> but these are the important ones. These are the ones um, that uh, I give, give you the important landmarks about how the immune system works. And then the detail comes in a bit later, right? So um, up in the next video, I will be inducing T reg cells.